on Robin Hood Radio. Of course, we have uh, a, a lot that goes on uh, with our good friends at the Hotchkiss Library in Sharon, even though they are undergoing the renovations uh, that they that they are undergoing. Uh, they still keep going with all the different programs. Of course, uh, they have their temporary location uh, at the uh, Legion uh, building, which is uh, where their mainstay is. But they still have a lot of different uh, events that they are hosting and going on. And what we're going to talk about now is one that's coming up on October the 6th uh, from 7 till 8.30 in the evening. It is a free event, uh, and it's... Um, an author event book. Uh, Rob Sedgwick will be there. Uh, and uh, th- the book is uh, Rob Goes to Jail. Uh, and uh, Mark's... Bob, okay. Bob Goes to Jail. Uh, and, uh, and Mark Scarborough will be there at this event. First of all, uh, Rob, uh, let's talk about uh, you as an author um, uh, and how long you've been an author, how you became an author, if that was your first vocation of choice. Uh, we'll, we'll start off with that first. I actually read a story that I wrote in high school, which won all sorts of prizes. And then I got systematically just killed <laughs> in the, in the, at, the, at the Bennington workshop. And, um, and that really traumatized me. So I just kind of stopped. And uh, Bennington's produced like lots of really terrific, very established pedigree writers. Um, and I came on this subject, Bob Goes to Jail, 2008-ish. I used to be in a drug ring. We were busted. Uh, I had a contract on my head. Um, we got caught with a quarter ton, which back then had a street value of $1.2 million. This was 1990. Um, so I thought it would be a great story. Um, and also because somebody like me uh, who came from you know, pretty nice background, how someone like me would get involved in something like this. And uh, so I thought it would make a great story. So that's how I started that. And subsequently, I started falling in love with writing again. I just finished a play. I wrote a couple of other books. But this is the first one that's that's finally been published, Bob Goes to Jail. And um, yeah, so that's that, that's kind of what I'm doing now in addition to teaching, actually. I've been an actor all my life. And um, I, I, I'm kind of finished with that at this point and just focusing on writing and teaching. So that's where I am. We are talking once again with Rob Sedgwick, uh, author of Bob Goes to Jail. It's going to be a conversation with Mark Scarborough. Uh, that is going to be fun just to, to, to sit in and eavesdrop and look at because uh, Mark is so interesting in what he does and the questions uh, and, and the information that he has. But this is an event that is coming up, uh, put on by the Hotchkiss Library of Sharon, October the 6th from 7 to 8.30. It's free. Uh, but, of course, it's via Zoom, so you're going to have to set up and, and contact the library via that. Uh, and you can go to uh, their website, Hotchkiss Library of Sharon, uh, .org, and you can just click on, on the event itself. Now, the this, this, this story that you talk about here that you've, that you've mentioned to us, Bob Goes to Jail, um, it sounds like now a story that you as someone who is – an actor, and you're now a writer, this sounds like something that you can put into a screenplay. Is that a possibility with this? Uh, I think so. <laughs> I mean, it's it's endlessly funny because I'm a very, I'm, I'm an utterly inept criminal. Um, and the, as, as uh, one of the, uh, one of the, my friends actually, who I ended up putting in well, I, I won't give away, but yeah. one of my friends who I was involved with it uh, said, um, you know, well, there's there's organized crime and then there's disorganized crime, and I guess we were disorganized. Yeah, but what's, inter- <laughs> what's interesting about your story is uh, you're not just talking about crime. You're talking about uh, uh, major, major crime, drug trafficking, and having... Uh, Somebody put out a hit on you, and then to come through all that is, a, you have to admit, is pretty amazing. 
And also drinking, yeah. And also <laughs> drinking the whole time. And I've been sober for about 27 years, so um, which is a real blessing. But yeah, no, it was, it, it was I mean, it, it's cloaked in funny, but it, there's a lot of, um, yeah, very heavy-duty stuff. It was, uh, there was the Mexican mob involved, um, um, uh, intergenerational uh, crime family from Mexico, and uh, I did have a hit on me after uh, we were busted, and I flipped. I mean, I gave everybody up. And so, um, yeah, so I had to watch my back for quite some time. And, uh, yeah, it was actually um, what, what, what's funny about it is because I had no idea the ramifications of being involved in something like this. And uh, so I had the, I had the gift of uh, ignorance. You know, um, along with the gift of ignorance, uh, was how did, how did you get over the fear, or were you so involved in this, and you were so involved in drugs and alcohol that fear was not a factor in this? Fear wasn't a factor until we really started doing it for a while, and then I realized it could maybe break bad. Um, certainly in the beginning, uh, I just... It was just fun, and I have a scene about when, I don't know if you read the book, but when we're in the elevator, first deal, and uh, I'm there with Jordan, who was the main guy in my uh, bracket of the um, of the crime thing. Um, we're in the elevator with uh, a refrigerator box filled with 250 pounds of marijuana, which, you know, marijuana seems... You know, nothing now because so much of it is legalized, but we got caught with a quarter ton, which that's a lot. And, um, and as I said before, that had a street value of like $1.2 million back then. So, uh, we got stuck in the elevator and he was terrified. And the driver was there too, who drove in from, uh, Missouri with stuff. And, um, but I was just able to say to the other passenger who was also another tenant in the building, like, Oh, these are just, these are, these are friends of mine. They've opened a clothing shop, clothing shop in Tribeca. And, uh, they, they got locked out and we're, we're taking the merchandise up to my apartment overnight. It's just so wonderful. So I was able to, so to me it was fun and it was just sort of, and I was an actor. So it was just like, I made up stuff and we got into the apartment and Jordan and the driver were terrified and Jordan said to me, oh, my God, you're a natural. You're amazing. I was terrified, you know, if we, and it was an old elevator. We got stuck. We would have been screwed. And you just, but I didn't, to me, it was new and fun. I wasn't, I didn't, wasn't aware of the seriousness of everything. No, I mean, I was aware maybe intellectually, but not emotionally aware of it. Let's go into your family yeah. background because I'm looking, I'm looking at, uh, uh, on, uh, on the information on you and, uh, you, uh, I come from a family where my father was a, a famous comedian in the 50s. My brothers uh, were just outstanding athletes. My sister was just the most gorgeous woman in the world, and I was this overweight little kid that had a fight for his way in the world. Your family and the people that uh, you, you were surrounded with are some pretty amazing people. Uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> they are, yeah. Is, yeah. Is, is that, I mean, well, we'll say uh, your sister is Kira Sedgwick, right? Yes. Uh, and, of course, she's married to Kevin Bacon. Uh, your yes. brother uh, was a painter. You also had uh, um, uh, what uh, Andy Warhol's muse. Uh, was, was, I mean— Edie Sedgwick. Edie Sedgwick is my—she's my cousin, <laughs> and she's, yes, Edie cousin and the Andy Warhol thing, and my great-great-great-whatever-grandfather was first speaker of the house, <laughs> and he also freed the first— uh, American slave to be freed in America uh, after Ameri a couple of years after America was born, and uh, her name was Elizabeth Freeman, and she was the first American slave freed, and that led very quickly to the abolition uh, abolition of slavery in uh, Massachusetts. It's it's, ama it's amazing uh, very, that you, very early on. It's so, it's um, it's it's amazing that you mentioned that because they just dedicated a statue uh, for Elizabeth Freeman in Sheffield, Massachusetts. Uh, they, about time! It's about time. Yeah, they just dedicate a beautiful yeah. statue for, for her. Right. So so, anyways, what I'm trying to imply is you come from. Uh, a, a, an obviously strong, very visible, and powerful family. Does that have any rea to relationship to you uh, 
taking the path you took, or is that just something that just happened to be? You no, know, what, what I did in the book, and, and also I had a very impressive stepfather who was, which is mentioned a lot in the book, who was uh, at the forefront of abstract expressionism in America. I'm talking about Jackson Pollock and Mark Roscoe and Clifford Still and Barney Newman, all of whom were friends of his. And he was the first person to actually buy their paintings. Uh, you had a clutch of people who were uh, at the forefront of that movement in addition to him. His name was Ben Heller, but he was the first one to put his money where his mouth is. And that's uh, America's great, one of a couple of America's great contributions to world culture. So we were raised, so my mom married my stepfather, we made, moved into a museum. We had Blue Poles, which is the Australian government now, which is now priceless. Uh, I almost, you know, saved that painting several occasions, almost people banging into it. We were playing tag. Uh, the Rothkos were all over the apartment, the um, Barney Newman. Uh, and so, but it was a very lousy place to be brought up in as a kid. And we were, and I examine this a lot in the book. So it's really a sort of lack of guidance. He was a very, uh, he was an abusive guy. It was really difficult. Um, and, and so I, I, so what I found with the book is I started with the bus. And then, uh, but then I alternate chapters and I go back to, uh, the beginning, sort of my history, sort of, and, uh, chapters time shift back and forth. And, uh, so, you know, it's essentially a lack of guidance that I ended up that way. And, um, it was was fueled by a lot of alcohol and, um, you know, I'm a dad now and kids are very delicate. And if you... You know they're easily uh, led on, led down the wrong path, and uh, a lot because of that lack of guidance. I think that's kind of where I ended up. But I think also that era, there were lots of absentee parents. You know, a yeah. lot of a lot of them were latch, latchkey kids, and a lot of people who read this book just said, "Yeah, my parents were never there. My parents never showed up." And this isn't a condemnation of them uh, by any stretch, but that's what happened. So, um, yeah, I think that's how it ended up. And also, it was kind of thrilling because I was offered this gig. And as I say in the book, it's like, you know, we do, you know, we do a half a ton a month. And, and uh, you'll, so we do two loads a month. So that, that, and you get three grand a pop. So that's 70 grand a year. You'll make, sitting around with your thumb up your ass. And I thought, wow, that, that sounds great to me. <laughs> and this was in 88, and that was a lot of money. And uh, and it was fun, and you felt like you were James Bond, you know? And it was just, and it's, of course, stupid now looking back on it, but at the time I was, you know, late 20s, and nothing much was going on in life. I mean, and I was acting, but I mean, that's, it's, it's a tough gig, I mean, when you're not working. And uh, it was great. <laughs> Right, so, it was a lot of fun. So, and, I, and I got a lot of work, acting work when I started doing it because I'd come to auditions and I just didn't care yeah. because I was making so much money and had this wonderful, fulfilled, enchanted fantasy life that was actual um, that, 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 that I had going on. So, you know, auditions were kind of like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. <laughs> it really, it, you know... Just talking to you for the past few minutes, uh, we're talking, of course, with Rob Sedgwick, uh, author of Bob Goes to Jail. Uh, it is obviously uh, one man, one young man's uh, search for some sort of acceptance, either in love, a family, a friendship, uh, in life, and uh, all the bad things that happened mixed in with uh, your attitude managed to put you out on the right side of things. Well, I... That took a long time. That was a process, you know. It was also like, uh, I, you know, after, after the whole legal situation, I had to get sober. And through that process, um, you know, which takes quite some time, uh, you know, now things are, uh, my life is much, much different, you know. And the irony is all the people I put in jail and snitched on and stuff like that, we're all best friends and we're all sober now and and we've remained friends all these years, which is 
kind of ironic because uh, there were there were a couple of years there were nobody talking. Everybody was in their own foxhole because there were heavy legal legal ramifications. Uh, some people like me you know, a contract on their head and all sorts of things. So, um, but yeah, we're, we're everyone's a couple of people got killed, but you'd have to read the book to see that. But um, uh, basically, we're all pretty great now, <laughs> you know, and kids and stuff like that, and trying to be responsible parents and, you know, good members of society, you know, giving back and, uh, you know, stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Well, it, it sounds like uh, that people that uh, will go to this, uh, attend this new event, We'll have more than an hour and a half's worth of action packed into it. Uh, once it again, it certainly is a lot of action. I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah, there, there, there are cops and robbers. There's lots of guns. There's lots of Mexican drug cartel. There's lots of New York. There are lots of all sorts of interesting things. <laughs> so. Well, once again, a conversation with Mark Scarborough with Rob Sedgwick, uh, once again, author of Bob Goes to Jail. This is uh, put on by the Hotchkiss Library and Sharon October 6th via Zoom from 7 to 8.30. For more information, it's a free event. Contact Hotchkiss Library of Sharon.org. Uh, Rob, it's been great speaking to you, and uh, all I can say is um, – I thought I've lived an interesting uh, 69 years. Uh, you've got me outpaced by at least 120 years. <laughs> oh, thank. Yeah, no, it's a, it's, it's a fun, it's a fun book. It's it's a fun book, and it's it's something that unless you unless you're a criminal, you haven't done that. It's a really sort of fascinating, you know, stroll down that path without any of the. Uh, bad stuff happening to you. <laughs> you know, so. uh, yeah, well, if a movie ever gets made, is Kevin going to be you? <laughs> no, he's way too old. So okay. You need somebody late 20s to All be right. able to pull that off. Right. We'll see. That would be a nice thing, though. All right. Well, it's been great speaking to you, and good luck on that uh, that night with your event. Thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate it.